been sharing our favourite moments of uh, loose women and loose women history. And Carol, well, maybe we've saved the best till last because it's <laughs> Friday and it's your turn. Your favourite all-time loose moment, please. Well, you know, it has to be it has to be the Russell Brand moment, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> and, but the, but the oh. thing is with that, and, and I don't know if you know this, but it was the best moment, but it was all, also the worst moment. <gasps> Why? Because because I, I wasn't prepared for him. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared. ready. Well, because you know he was in the, the story behind it is that he was in the building doing Have I Got News for You, and I was avoiding him. I, I didn't want to bump into him. You just don't want to meet your crush, do you? No. 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 At the time, you know, he was like my my ultimate sex fantasy and I just I thought if I see him I'm just gonna tell him this is jelly anyway so I avoided him I we, we started doing the show Denise started up a discussion about blowing off as you do <laughs> but, well, and she said to me is this on there well we, if you want rather than save you e explaining it why don't we relive it with yeah. you Carol oh. here it is when Carol met Russell if you were going out with Russell Brand just say would you trump in front of Russell <laughs> <laughs> Not on the first date, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, how long would it no. take, do you think, before you would trump in front of him? Well, you know, the thing is, it's a perfectly... <laughs> Russell for sex. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 oh. You know what? Because I've been up in my dressing room just fantasizing about what would happen if he knocked on the door and just came in and ravished me. Ooh. And then he and walks then he onto was... the set when we're talking about blowing off. <laughs> and it just it just wasn't it wasn't right, but he was he was he did smell really nice. Did he? <laughs> See, I, I, I met Russell years ago and he didn't smell very good at all, I have to be honest. <laughs> no, but that was during the bad years. The bad years, yeah. absolutely. Well, I kissed him, it was nice. Mm. I but nearly stuck my tongue in, six but I years. didn't. Well, oh, no. <laughs> Keeping uh, nicely on the subject of heroes, the uh, Labour Party conference has come to a close this week and earlier in the week at the conference, Gordon Brown gave a rallying speech to his party, Pay Faithful. His wife, Sarah Brown, also spoke passionately about her husband before he took to the stage describing him as her own hero. But Telegraph columnist Celia Walden has revealed that she can't remember when she last used the word hero to describe <coughs> a man. By the way, Celia dates Piers Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Good so, point. were we moved by Sarah's words? And what do you think? When was the last time you compared a man in your life to, to, to hero status? Well, I was very moved, actually. In fact, I, I went to conference this year. I've never been to a conference in my life. And I just thought, it's time I went to see what it was all about. And I really enjoyed it. It was very exciting, actually. And, um, exciting. and I, it was incredibly exciting. And I kind of think it's important to stand up and be counted. And, you know, when things get tough, not back down. So I thought, I'm going to go and see what's going on. And they really are yeah, very up for this, for the fight that they've got on their hands. But, but I thought Sarah was absolutely lovely, I have to say. I mean, I was sitting right in front of her, and, and she was courageous and dignified, and the whole thing was very, very moving. <laughs> no, she was. And the thing that people don't know, listen, she, she wrote those words all by herself. Nobody asked her to do it. Oh, you know, she know. went on. No, but she's not some product of somebody else. She's just there on her own, dignified, saying what she thinks. And I found it very moving. Everybody there found it very moving because she gave us some insight into what is a, a very shy, human being mm. and made us understand he's Humanized intelligent, him. hard working and very caring. Well, I, 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 I think it's, you're right. She did. my opinion on No? Him. Really, Carol? No. Now there's a surprise. No, I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, I just don't know what that's got to do with, with conference. You know, okay, she loves him. We know that. She's married to him. Of course she does. He's her hero. He's not ours. He's not mine. He's not many people's hero at the moment and it doesn't change that. But I admire her for standing up and saying Absolutely. that in front of Me all too. those people because Absolutely. she's standing by her man, and that's right. <laughs> and 
And I think, you know, it's got nothing to do with politics. And what we all forget uh, with somebody like Sarah Brown is the fact that she didn't choose this path. She's followed him into politics. They've had an incredibly difficult time. And they're very mm. private people. They've had great Sorry. loss in their lives. And uh, this is obviously way out of her comfort zone. Mm. And I think he's fighting she for his political life well. right now. And in, in a time when he's trying to drive through the country through a global economic slump, it's, he's damned if he does and he's damned if he doesn't. And this week she put a, a neck on the line for a man mm. to be commended. I, I, all I want to say is one thing. I just think wives of politicians should stay away from conference and shouldn't be up there. They well, should yeah. leave it to a man. Really? Keep yeah. away. Very Absolutely. Keep Very away from conference. Up. Leave it alone. But can I just move on slightly to talk about heroes? Yeah. Mm, yeah. The hero of my lifetime, as men wise, was my father, who was just the most wonderful man. And I'll tell you why, because it was total, and I'm sure you'll all agree with your dad's unconditional love. Mm. If I'd have killed 50 people like that day, he'd have said, We'll sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I still love you. Well, he loved me without question and I think that's a hero isn't it when somebody is in your life they love you you can do no wrong and um, you know he was just always there for me and my grandson Oliver of course well, I think most of us snogs me at any given moment <laughs> <laughs> most of us would uh, would agree on the father front I think my dad is absolutely my moral compass in life oh. and and without doubt the the finest man I know but my brother is running a very close second I, I think um, he is a real life hero because every day my brother gets up and he kisses his family goodbye and he goes to work and he saves lives. He's a firefighter who earns a pittance Absolutely. and our country depends on people like him. Yeah, so I'd those are, those are the heroes we Absolutely. Are I agree completely with that, love. Uh, I'd, have, I'd just like to put a word in for my husband on that same uh, line because he's a, a GP, a, a, do a doctor, and he's incredibly hardworking and every day goes to work and he's responsible for human lives and saves them on a regular basis. And he works 12 hour days most days. Um, and I just think he's amazing. He's you know my, who hero. my hero. Is. Go on. Gordon Brown. No, no, not Gordon Brown, funny enough, but, and nobody I know personally, but the guy, you know, the whistleblower who blew the whistle on the MP's expenses to the Daily Telegraph, that's yeah. my hero. Yeah. Yes. 